My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, March the 12th. Uh, we will sing praises to the Lord from uh, our songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. If uh, you do not have one of those uh, songbooks in your possession, you'd like to sing with us. I will give you the title of the song if you have a different songbook or you want to Google the song uh, so that you can sing along. I'll try to take a little bit of time between songs so that you can do that. We will also observe the Lord's Supper, <clears throat> and I have a message for you that I hope will be enlightening and beneficial. And so without further ado, let's start our song service. Uh, the first song that we will sing is, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. My faith looks up to thee. That is number 586 in Songs of Faith and Praise. My faith looks up to thee. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away, oh, let me from this day be holy thine, may thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, oh, may my love to thee pure, warm, and changeless be, a living fire. When life's dark maze I tread And griefs around me spread Be thou my guide Did darkness turn to day Wipe sorrow's tears away, nor let me ever stray from thee aside. When ends lies transient dream, when death's call silence dream shall o'er me roll. Blessed Savior, then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above a ransom soul. Number 472, a shelter in the time of storm. A shelter in the time of storm. 472. A shelter in the time of storm. The Lord's my rock and him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever will be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, 
a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land. A weary land, oh Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh rock divine, oh refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. And before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 334, Tis Midnight on Olive's Brow. Tis Midnight on Olive's Brow, number 334. Tis Midnight and on Olive's Brow the stars have dim that lately shone. Midnight in the garden, now the suffering Savior prays Tis midnight and on all is noon. The Savior wrestles alone with fears. He that disciple whom he Loved deeds, not his master's grief and tears. Tis midnight and more others guilt. A man of sorrow. Weeps in blood, yet he that hath it anguish now is not forsaken by his God. <coughs> song that angels sing, 
heard by mortals are the strains that sweetly soothe the Savior's woe. We know that the night before Jesus was betrayed, the night that he was betrayed, he gathered together with his disciples and uh, it was the Passover season and partially in honor to the Passover season. But moreover, uh, there is a, a symbolism here. Uh, Jesus revealed what would happen to him. And then he told his disciples and told us that there are things that we ought to do in remembrance of him, that uh, he will be forever etched in our hearts and in our minds, that uh, he is the son of God and that uh, he would die for the sins of the world. And so what he said was, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood. The symbols that we have before us are the bread, which symbolizes his body, and the fruit of the vine, which symbolizes his blood. So as we partake, we remember Jesus crucified. We remember that he died for our sins. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you loved us so much that at just the right time you sent Jesus to us. And among all the wonderful things he did uh, on earth, the teachings and the miracles, we're mo most amazed by his sacrifice, his one-time sacrifice for all, his sacrifice of his physical body, his body hanging on the cross in pain, uh, knowing that he did that for you and I. So as we partake of this bread, help us to remember that body on the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. As we take this fruit of the vine into our bodies, help us to remember the blood that Jesus shed for us. Help us to remember the life that flowed from his body as the blood came out from different openings in that body. Help us to remember the anguish, not only mentally and physically and spiritually that he uh, withstood, but the physical part, the shedding of his blood. As we partake, let's remember the blood that washes away our sins. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. At this part of our service, we remember that we are instructed to lay by in store on the first day of the week. We are specifically instructed to give that which we have prospered. Let's remember how much that we have prospered. Let's remember the gifts that Jesus gives to us and that all good things come from heaven above. So as we give, understand that we are giving what is his own. Uh, bless us in our giving that we might do so with an open and cheerful heart. Let's pray. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, that we have the honor to give back to you. Help us to be generous in our giving, knowing that you gave uh, your son for us and he gave his all for us. Help us as we give to remember that uh, the church as we know it exists because we are able to do certain things with our membership, that we're able to go out into the world and bring others to Christ, that we are able to be benevolent and help those in need. 
We pray for those who steward these monies, that they might do so wisely, that others may come to Christ and people's needs may be met. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's sing one more song before the message. The title of the song is He is Able. It is number 213. 213. The title, He is Able. <clears throat> he is able, more than able. To accomplish what concerns me today, he is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. That concludes our song service. I know the Lord was praised in our singing. I know that I was lifted by the song service, and I pray that uh, each of us uh, gain some benefit from it in praising the Lord as we are supposed to. This evening, I would like to uh, deliver a very, very short message called Faith's Fundamentals. Faith's Fundamentals. You know, uh, in anything uh, that we learn, especially something that we're not familiar with, uh, we're told to get down to the fundamentals in Acting, it is the way we emote certain things. In public speaking, is the way that we prepare. In athletics, it is the way that uh, we uh, have a foundation for uh, the particular endeavor that we are involved in. Well, uh, fundamentally, <laughs> to reuse the word, we're going to speak about faith this evening. Faith's fundamentals. We get the quintessential uh, definition of faith in Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the first verse. And I want us to pay very, very close attention to two specific words. It, say, it says, faith is the, the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. A healthy understanding of faith comes, I think, from digging into the entire book of Hebrews, because Hebrews is a book that is based, I guess we should say, is faith-based. And in uh, the book of Hebrews, especially the 11th chapter, and not to... Uh, overuse a term uh, that I kind of like to use. In the 11th chapter, we find the Bible's Hall of Fame. You know, in, in uh, uh, all aspects of entertainment, we have Halls of Fame. We have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We have the Baseball, Football, Basketball, uh, Ice Hockey Hall of Fame. We're the best of the best that played the game or that uh, were involved in uh, whatever that activity was have, have reached a pinnacle as people have accepted that what we have done was very, very, very special. And so with that in mind, let's take this definition from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 and zero in on those two words. Assurance and conviction, assurance, and conviction. Do we get the idea that the word opinion is not involved in this? 
Do we get that idea? I hope so. Because opinion is not involved. It is assurance and conviction. Some of you over the past years may have watched the public uh, broadcasting system, PBS, and they had a show on there for years called Nova. And uh, one of the chief contributors to Nova was a man by the name of Carl Sagan. He told us a lot about the universe, but I want to uh, let you know that he once made this remark, belief in the absence of evidence. Belief in the absence of evidence. Or as an anom anonymous child once says, the power of believing what ain't so. <laughs> but you see, opinions leak into that. The lack of evidence leaks into that. You know, the absence of evidence, what ain't so, for the definition of faith, we take Hebrews 11.1 1, and we say it's all about assurance and conviction. Now, faith is inseparably linked to obedience to God. And so as we go back to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, we see some of the men of faith. It says, Abel, by faith, offered a sacrifice to God. Why did he offer a sacrifice to God? It says so. He did so by faith. Enoch, by faith, pleased God. What was it about Enoch that pleased God? It was his faith. Noah, by faith, believed God and built the ark. Something as outrageous as we could possibly think. And it took years and years and years to build that ark. And he was steadfast and he worked with his family for years building that huge boat. Now, did he build it because he was a boatsman? That he was going to enter the America's Cup? No. He built it by faith because God told him. And finally, we have the, the father, perhaps, of faith, Abraham. When Abraham, being comfortable in the land that he was in, was told by God to leave that land and go somewhere else. And it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed and he went out. Do we notice that the faith of each of these four is linked inseparably to their obedience to God? Abel obeyed God by his sacrifice. Enoch pleased God by his faith. Noah, by faith, built. He obeyed. And Abraham pulled up stakes and moved. So it is to me a fact that all of these souls commended for faith in this chapter are so commended not because their faith did nothing, but that their faith did something. Their faith said, I will be obedient to God's will. Faith is assurance and conviction. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, Faith that trusts God, we are told, is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, when the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness for those 40 years, they didn't question the existence of God. 
You know, God put those plagues upon the Egyptians. God killed the firstborn, finally, the last of the plagues. God divided the Red Sea for them so that they could walk across on the dry land. God certainly evidenced himself. And it wasn't the evidence of God that was their problem. In Hebrews 3.19, it was their unbelief. Yes, they believed in God's existence and that God had done marvelous works and he was feeding them and he was giving them water. But they didn't trust him to see their way through the trials in the wilderness. We know when Moses went up into the, uh, up, up in the mountain to get the law that they built a golden idol. And then several times on the way, they said, we would have been better off back in Egypt. You know, the melons were sweeter and the food was greater. They seemed to have conveniently uh, forgotten that they had been turned into slaves. Their worrying and their constant complaining revealed a serious problem with their faith. Their faith that God would see them through. As a result, Moses and those who started the journey didn't get to see the promised land. Now, we may believe that God exists and God is all powerful. But do we cast all of our cares upon him? Believing that he cares? That's what first Peter chapter five, verse seven says, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And so as we uh, complete this journey about uh, in learning a little more of faith, faith is something that is a continuum. Faith continues to use a contradiction of terms. You're not supposed to use a term to describe the term you're dealing with, but I'm going to. Faith is faithful. Faith is faithful to the end. The similarity of words, faith and faithful, is not a mistake. That's not absent. If we have faith, we are called faithful people. Those in Hebrews 11, you know, Abel, uh, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, persisted in their faith, right? They, they didn't just stop. And by the way, all the times weren't rosy. Can you imagine the ridicule that Noah must have received? Can, can you wonder what his family may have said to Abraham? Yo, Abraham, we're, we're pretty comfortable here. Why are we going to travel across the wilderness to somewhere where, uh, to be somewhere that we don't even know? And so through trials and tribulations, these men persisted because they were men of faith. You have to be a person of faith to be in the Faith Hall of Fame. And through the good times, the bad times, through joys and tribulation. And then we come to Jesus. The noblest example that we could ever hope to imitate. Who in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 said, endured the cross despising the shame. We just observed the Lord's Supper. When Jesus went to the cross, he despised the shame of it. And in verse 3 of chapter 12, it says he endured such contradiction of sinners against him. His own people turned against him. 
And why did he do that? Very simply put, he did it for you and he did it for me. Our faith must never falter. Our faith must never fail. And Revelation chapter 2 uh, and verse 10 puts it all into a neat package. He says, be faithful unto death. And so with that, how does our faith measure up? Well, what we have seen is that faith leads to obedience. The four men of great faith here not only had this, this uh, assurance and conviction, but they put it into practice in obeying what God told them to do. For us, that is becoming a Christian. Becoming a Christian means that we obey what God tells us to do. In John chapter 8 and verse 31, Jesus put it this succinctly. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And even before the church was formed in the second chapter of Acts, Jesus said, as he left the earth, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Assurance and conviction leads to obedience. And so with that, if we are to become a child of God, we must obey God into salvation, into obedience, just as Jesus said in Matthew 28 and Mark 16. And as Peter said in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, rise and be baptized, each one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't taken that step, we invite you this evening to make that commitment. This is part of faith's fundamentals. It is assurance and conviction and obedience. You must confess that Jesus is the Son of God, repent of your former life, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you need to come to the Lord, now is the time. And if, uh, if, if you are immediate in that need, please contact one of us. We will be there for you. Let's end our service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for uh, your sending of Jesus to us, that the faith that we have in him as our Savior will uh, pave our way to eternal life through the assurance and conviction of who he is and in our obedience to him. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as Christians. Help us to do your will here on earth. Help us to live godly and moral lives. Bless us as we walk here, as we are servants. As Jesus said, he did not come uh, to be served, but to serve. Help us to be your humble servants in our lives. Continue to be with us. Help us to look forward to every time that we get together to either study your word or to worship you or to sing praises in your name. That this is what we're supposed to do because of the faith that we have in you, God, our Father. We pray this in your Son's most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.